More than 600 Australians fought to their death, another 1,600 wounded. More than 70 years have passed since Australia battled on the Kokoda track, but returned serviceman Keith Norrish remembers as if it were yesterday. The supply system was bad. We were outnumbered by the Japanese and their weaponry was superior to ours. Armed with a Thompson submachine gun and letters from sweetheart Peggy, Mr Norrish knew he'd have to overcome the Japanese to clear a path for the wounded. When I was called down to the company headquarters to get my instructions about the attack, Pelham Thorman, who had been using my steel mirror, had a red beard, a five-day red beard, and I had a black one. So he, uh, we exchanged pleasantries about a lot of nonsense there. With great difficulty, Mr Norris says he stuffed the steel mirror and the letters from Peggy in his shirt pocket, an action that would save his life. He remembers charging into the attack with fellow serviceman Osborne. He dived suddenly onto the ground and as he dived, as he hit the ground, his tin hat was blown off and I thought he was dead. So I ducked around the, the left side of the, the log and dispatched the two gunners, the gunner and his number one, number two. Then, the unthinkable. After putting his gun on automatic fire and killing the Japanese soldiers charging toward him, his ammunition ran out. So I reached into my pouch for the box magazine to replace and there was nothing there. And I tried the other side and there was nothing there either. Uh, in ducking and diving and weaving, coming down the hill, I'd had to do a couple of shoulder rolls and uh, I'd shed the box magazines that I had, the four box magazines. Remembering Osborne laying nearby, Mr Norrish made a dash for his ammo, stepping into a burst of fire from a light machine gun. And they all hit the steel mirror, and deflected four of them down into the chest, through the chest, into the stomach muscles. It cartwheeled me back up the hill and I finished up face down in the mud on the track. His lung punctured, another bullet in his bicep, but the battle was far from over. Mr Norrish had to walk for almost six days to reach the casualty station at the beginning of the Kokoda track. We got to the medical doctor in daylight and he did what he could <coughs> and said, Righto Norrish, Port Moresby seven days walk ahead of you. Keep on taking little short steps and when you come to the end of your tether, uh, someone will pick you up. A young Papuan looked after Mr Norrish. The two couldn't speak to one another, but Mr Norrish says it wasn't needed. He was wonderful. He knew that I'd had enough and would find a log and sit me on it and lean, lean against the tree, the nearest tree and he'd disappear and come back sometimes half an hour later with a tin of water. Mr Norrish finally reached the casualty clearing station where he underwent surgery before being shipped back to Brisbane. He didn't get to see his beloved Peggy until some time later when he was granted home leave. I remember the train pulled into Perth. I was hanging out of a window and she was running along the, the platform. While Mr Norrish made it home, many didn't. He'll be paying his respects at a local ceremony, remembering his comrades.